Hey guys, uh, I wanted to make a quick video going over something I'm doing. Uh, so this is actually for a research project I'm doing for school, and it is dealing with artificial muscles. Um, these are sometimes referred to as McKibben actuators, and these have been around for quite some time. They've been around since, I think, the mid-60s is when they were first discovered or invented. Um, the very simple operation, these are used in all kinds of robotics from, like, medical robotics, down to the enthusiast RC uh, community. And basically what it is, is uh, if you've ever done any work on like computers or any kind of like hardware that involves cable management, um, you might have seen this material. Let me get a regular piece of it. Hold on. So this stuff. And what this is, is it's called expandable cable sleeving. So what you do is you push it together. It's like a, one of those finger traps kind of. You put your fingers in it. When you push, it expands. When you pull, it contracts. Same kind of thing. So what you're supposed to do is expand it, put your wires in, and then pull it tight. And then it'll, it'll like sheath the wires. So a couple years ago, I did a rebuild on my desktop at home and I needed to make a custom cable for the power supply. And all the other power supply cables were sleeved in this, so I just picked up this roll. I think it's... Yeah, the smallest amount I could get was 50 feet, so I had this nice, you know, huge roll left over. So a couple months after that, I discovered this McKibben-style actuator and figured, oh, I have the materials to try it, or to build it, so I figured out, you know, why not try it? So. Basically, all you need in addition to that is a couple fittings. Um, you can use barb fittings if you want. I actually had these pneumatic fittings laying around. They interface with this green tubing here. Um, and then some kind of like plug on the other side. Or you can actually use another barb fitting and then just route it, but I just put a plug. And then you can use zip ties. Um, I just use tape because I think that's all I had. And you get some tubing. You can use latex or silicone is really common. Uh, I had latex left over from a uh, slingshot or something I made. Um, and this is 3 eighths outer diameter and 1 fourth inner diameter. So it's not the thinnest wall stuff. Um, ideally you'd want thinner wall so you wouldn't have to have um, such a high PSI like threshold to expand it. Um, I actually made one with this little play balloon, one of these, like, you know, the animal ones where they, they're long and, um, they're not just like a ball, they're, like, cylindrical. So I put one of those in here, and this would pump right up at, like, 10 PSI, and you'd have a, a small little muscle. Um, now this one did pop, because I bumped it up to the normal operating pressure of these ones, and it blew it, so. Balloons are a little bit too thin for this application. Um, but for this one, it uh, works great. I think 70, 75, yeah, 75 PSI was the optimum pressure to force, um, I guess, efficiency zone, that's what you call it. So at 70 PSI, I think we were getting, not on this one, but on the one I have set on my test bench here, I think we were getting 30 pounds of force and 100 and 160 newtons. I believe. Um, I'll have to double check that. It was something like that. So this was actually the first one I ever made a couple years ago. Then I made this one here at UCF. And then I made the final... There's a tripod. I'm trying to adjust the camera. I made the final one here. So this is my little test bench. So as you can see I have the muscle and that's attached to a little eye hole screw that I screwed into this piece of wood. And the other end, this is a crane scale. And this does all the units I need, those pounds, kilograms, and newtons. So I can switch between it, it tears, uh, you can hold it, and then that's attached to a, another screw at the end. Um, tripod's making some weird squeaky noise. I apologize for that. Okay. So then I have my pneumatic switches here. Let me just scoot this down. So this is a, it's not a pressure regulator, it's a flow uh, re regulator, I guess. So it allows, so if I have it 
fairly closed. See how slow that expansion was? If I open it up, it's like instantaneous. So that allows me to just control, especially on the higher pressures, that allows me to control the like impulse of the actuator. And then of course I have a pneumatic switch here. Um, it's actually a three-way, yeah, so it lets it, you have pressure on one side, it lets it through, and then when you deactivate it, it blows all the pressure from this side out. So it activates and then depressurizes. So that's hooked up to a, this is a 30 gallon, no, not yeah, 30, a 7 gallon, <laughs> sorry, I was uh, thinking about my trash can, I'd buy bags for it the other day. So yeah, I have a 7 gallon air tank, and I pump that up with this little guy, little pneumatic uh, compressor, and the uh, only problem with these is the little ones, they don't have any kind of humidity filtration, so after, especially here in Florida where it's like consistently 80, 90 percent humidity. Um, and the air conditioner in my building doesn't do a particularly good job of dehumidifying the air. So after about five minutes of pumping, you got, you know, water in your tank. So that's kind of a bummer, but, um, I mean, for this, it's not that big of a deal. But if I was using tools, that'd be a problem because it'd, like, gunk it up. Um, anyway, so that pumps up the tank, and then the tank has um, a pressure valve on it so I can see how much is in the tank. And it also has a regulator. I'm not going to show that because it's like down on the side here. But it basically has a regulator that I can um, set whatever pressure I want up to the pressure of the tank. And then that uh, I have um, pressure gauges for each of those. And that's pretty much it. Like a little quick disconnect here to disconnect from this if I'd like. And that's about it. It goes into the muscle. And then we have our scalp. So right now... I guess I should have pumped this up before I started this video. I apologize. The tank has, I guess I left this connected, so there's probably a couple very minor leaks in here. Over the last couple days, it's dropped down to 30 PSI. So I'm not going to be able to show you the full potential of this, but I'll still demonstrate it. Let me talk about this first. So. This muscle, um, I had to build with pretty much what I have on hand. Um, it's kind of a pain to go to the store because the closest store is pretty far away, like Home Depot or Lowe's. So I had a bunch of random parts, like actuator, or um, not actuator, uh, fittings. I had a bunch of random fitting parts. And I had a lot of this, a lot of tubing, and a lot of electrical tape. So I used those to make this. So let me zoom in a little bit. So I made it as symmetrical as possible. Um, the problem we are having with these is that pretty much all the force generated comes from this mesh. So if you grab this and grab the mesh and pull, that's basically what it's doing. So that was actually coming undone on all these muscles I was making. So to address that, I did two things. First of all, I reinforced it because I'm going to push this to its absolute breaking point uh, if I can even get that pressure. Uh, I might have to figure out some other solution to get pressure that will blow this, but uh, I'm planning on doing that. So what I did is I doubled up on the mesh. So there's actually two layers. There's mesh inside of this mesh. I melted the two ends with my soldering iron, and that actually kind of shrinked the ends. In here, the fittings... Um, you can kind of see here how there's like there's like a gap. It's not exactly like this, but there's basically a point where there's there's like a bolt or a uh, like a wrench fitting, and then there's it drops down, and there's a smaller portion. So I basically melted that into there, and then wrapped the tape around it. So it's actually it's not the tape holding it. All the tape's doing is compressing it. It's almost like a compression fitting. Uh, so I did that for both both the pipe. The, so the latex tubing and the mesh, both, like their own individual thing. And then I wrapped it up a bunch of times over that. Um, so that's worked very good. There's absolutely no leaks, and this hasn't had any signs of, like, wanting to give out. So I would assume that would be a failure point. Um, 
when this thing does fail, but we'll have to wait and see. It seemed to have held up pretty good. I've, I've tested it up to, I think, 90 PSI, and it's held fine. So uh, I'm really glad that turned out because that was something that I was very unsure on. And other than that, I just um, you know used some Teflon tape to seal it up, and then I have a little fitting down over here, right here for this pipe, and that's great. It just pushes in, pushes out, or pulls out, um, and then that interfaces with the rest of the system. So that's about it. Pretty self-explanatory. This is tied in here and then tied to the scale. So when you activate it, you can measure the force. So I'll do a little demonstration. Um, again, this is at 30 psi. So uh, don't. This is not the like full potential of it. So I'll do a quick one. So this will be quick. Another thing to keep in mind: this is not the full contraction of it. This is pretty much tight on that scale. This is just to measure the force. This would contract about two inches normally if it was just free. Okay, so let's take a look at the force. Let me uh, zoom in here. Oh. Need to fix that uh, tripod that's really quite annoying. A little squeak. Alright, so this is Newton, so 46, that's not, that's like barely anything actually. Um, I'll put it to pounds, so you guys might be a little bit more familiar with that. So it's pulling about 10 pounds, it's about a third of what it normally does. Makes sense, it's about a third of the PSI. And for all you people in Europe, if you're watching. So there we go. Um, something I found very quite interesting about this is that I ha before I had this test bench, I would just actually tie in um, this and grab it. I made a little makeshift weight. So you see how there's, well, this is over it, but there's normally threads there, which are the same threads that tie into this piston. This is just a normal piston. So I actually made like a weight. I have my copper wire here tied around that so you can hang this from this. And this probably weighs, this probably weighs close to, probably weighs close to 10 pounds. So about what it was pulling. Um, now I operated this at a higher PSI, but still, 10 pounds. And do you, you see how fast that actuates? Imagine that, but the whole that's the whole cycle of the contraction. So it goes, but just like that. It would it would not slow down like hardly at all with 10 pounds on it. It would still pull that rate up. In fact, I had to brace my arm against the table to prevent my arm from being pulled because it was just like accelerating it so quickly. So that's why I'm really quite interested in these actuators um, because number one, they're soft and flexible. They're, they're extremely lightweight, very easy to make and low cost, and they act just like human muscles. They can go extremely quick, they can go slow and controlled, they can um, hold a constant force. Uh, it's very, very quite interesting. So. This is what I'm doing my research paper on for school. It's actually an English project. Um, so when I'm finished with that, I will post the report in the description. I'll probably do a couple more videos on this. Um, I just had this set up because I needed to start collecting data on it. But I'll post. I'll definitely post the results in the um, video description, and probably do some more videos. If you were looking for on my whiteboard, I don't know if you can see that, uh, these like boat designs. There's another, there's an engineering project I'm working on at the moment that entails building a boat. Um, so I actually have, I don't know if you can also see all this wood here. <laughs> so I've been, I've been busy on that as well. Let me, I actually have it here. Uh, let me just quickly talk about that. So 
We got some batteries. Uh, I'll do a separate video actually, probably right after I finish this one on that. We got a lot of little pieces of wood. Um, yeah, I'll actually I'll actually just make another video right after this. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Again, I'll post the paper in the description when I'm done. They'll probably be within the next couple weeks here. Um, anyway, that's the update. Uh, thanks for watching.